Hello fellow hands and shortwave listeners, this is John AE5X and I wanted to make a brief um, video demo of how I use a couple of add-on components in conjunction with my SDR receiver to measure antenna characteristics, uh, specifically SWR and 2 to 1 SWR bandwidth or whatever SWR bandwidth you want to look at. This is an RSP Duo. It's a $260 receiver but it doesn't do anything more than the RSP1A would do as far as this test goes and the RSP1A is only $100. The other two components I have, I forget their individual prices but together they're about $25. On the left is a wideband noise generator and here in the middle is an RF bridge. Um, I think the noise generator goes up to 3 gigahertz as far as the upper limit to where it will generate noise at a, at a fairly even level. Um, and as you can see on the RF bridge it goes up to 3 gigahertz. The RSP Duo and the RSP1A and the RSP2 all go up to 2 gigahertz and down to 1 kilohertz. So I can measure antenna SWR and bandwidth anywhere within that range um, of about 1 kilohertz to 2 gigahertz. And I want to show you how to do that. It's uh, the advantage of doing it this way as opposed to using an antenna analyzer is that these components cost far less than an analyzer or some SWR meters and they cost way less than test equipment that goes up to the frequency range that I can measure here. So anyway, let's look a little bit more closely at the RF bridge. Okay, like the noise generator, the RF bridge came from an eBay vendor, a different eBay vendor. Um, the noise bridge came from one in China, and uh, the noise bridge came from a vendor in Ukraine. I'll put that information on the screen here in the video. And it was $7, and that included shipping. Um, there are a number of noise bridges you can buy on eBay and elsewhere in various price ranges and frequency ranges. Most of them come with three ports, an input, an output, and a device under test port. This one comes with a fourth port right here for adding a reference signal or a reference dummy load termination. Um, that allows you to look at either 50 ohm systems or 75 ohm systems based on what you terminate the reference port with. And here I've got um, a 50 ohm SMA dummy load and that's probably all I'll ever use is 50 ohms. Um, unless I take this to work and do something with radar systems just to tinker around and, and make some comparisons, which I may do. So anyway, what we're doing here is I'm going to be looking at 20 meters. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm going to be looking at my uh, tri-bander on 20 meters, injecting noise into the input port, and the output goes, of course, to the RSP Duo, and that information will be presented on screen on my on my laptop running SDR Uno. In the middle right here I'll have my 20 meter antenna connected. So anyway, let's turn on the noise bridge. Okay, and you can see the noise went up. I'm looking at 14.250 megahertz by the way on the uh, SDR Duo. Okay, so the noise without an antenna connected going into the duo measures about 52 dB and this cable is my going out to my Yagi and as you can see as soon as I plug that antenna in I get a dip in the spectrum and that goes down to 75 dB okay so 75 minus 52 is 23 dB difference and my chart shows that a 23 dB difference corresponds to an SWR of 1.15 to 1. So uh, that's uh, pretty much what my antenna analyzer tells me it is. Um, the 2 to 1 SWR in terms of return loss is 9.5 dB. So I could go here nine and a half dB down on each side and over here and then subtract the frequency difference and that would give me my two to one bandwidth. In a matter of days I'm hoping and I'm told that um, SDR Play will have a spectrum analysis program 
for their RSP receivers downloadable from their website. And what that'll do is just make this a bit easier. I'll be able to put my cursor somewhere on here, click, put it over here, click again. That'll make markers and the delta will automatically be shown between them uh, in terms of width and vertical amplitude, uh, frequency and width and amplitude in the vertical axis. And uh, again, that'll be shown in an alphanumeric display that'll be displayed on the um, somewhere on the screen, I'm not sure where, but uh, anyway, that'll make this measurement a little bit easier and uh, also give me a bit more control over how much bandwidth I want to look at at any given time. So I'm looking forward to that coming out, but anyway, for now, as is, the um, 20 meter SWR agrees with uh, my antenna analyzer. And now let me look at another antenna. I'm uh, tuned for um, on my dipole for 40 meters. So um, let me go down there, put that somewhere around the middle of the screen, it already is, and let me switch now to the dipole. First of all, let me take a look at what the noise is, 50, 50 dB. Okay, that's 7 megahertz. I went from 50 to about 66. So that's 16 dB difference corresponding to an SWR of 1.37. And I might be able to tune that better. Let me uh, adjust the tuner. I'm going through a tuner now to the uh, dipole and I can change where resonance occurs and to some degree how steep it is. Check that out. Now I'm down to 66. So anyway, uh, again, this is just a simple way to look at SWR. And I can do that on both of these frequencies that I've just looked at, 20 and 40 meters, but I can't do it above 100 megahertz because my SWR analy or antenna analyzer only goes up to 100 megahertz. And uh, I've got two meter antennas, so this is the way I would use um, this equipment to look at a 2 meter antenna on my uh, on my truck or even the 1.09 gigahertz antenna that I'm using in the attic to receive ADSB transmissions from aircraft in the area. I'll be able to check that. To buy an antenna analyzer that measures up into that frequency range you're going to be spending over a thousand dollars. So this with a combined cost of uh, 125 dollars if you had the RSP1A instead of the Duo uh, you could look at antennas up to 1.09 gig up to 2 gigs for $125. So it's just another way of doing something and a cheaper way of doing it um, if the frequency range exceeds that of your current antenna analyzer. 73s and thanks for watching.